wake of recent events and the sudden rise of interest in the Noahide laws that are already being pushed as the path of righteousness for all non-Jewish people of the world. We're already seeing the knee-jerk reaction of some of YouTube's favorite anti-Torah teachers as they stumble over each other to make the claim that the Noahide laws are the friend of Torah keepers and vice versa. But I can't help and assume that these statements are based on a complete and total lack of any measure of research, since it only takes a little digging to find that the Noahide laws make keeping Torah illegal and punishable by death for anyone other than Orthodox Jews themselves, who call what they keep quote-unquote Torah as well, but would be more accurately described as Mishnah Torah with a splash of Talmud and a whole barrel of rabbinical commentary. But let's not get too far off topic. Today, instead of discussing what these laws consist of in depth one by one, I want to just quickly demonstrate that this push for Noahide laws by the powers that be is actually a power play against true unadulterated Torah study and practice, and that the mainstream Christian church outlets are already helping to lay the foundation of the Torahless deception that was prophesied long ago. You see, Many are already familiar with the sudden rise of popularity in the seven Noahide laws, and how there's a genuine potential for them to be forced on the world by the powers that be. These seven laws, according to the Talmud, are for all the children of Noah, and are the only standard of righteousness for Gentiles across the world. According to Jewish tradition, non-Jews who adhere to these laws are said to be followers of Noahidism and regarded as righteous Gentiles, who are assured a place in Olam Haba, or the world to come. These laws include the following, not to worship idols, not to curse God or blaspheme his name, to establish courts of justice, not to commit murder, not to commit adultery or sexual immorality, not to steal, and not to eat flesh torn from a living animal. According to the Sanhedrin document 57a, a heathen is executed for the violation of four precepts, and these include blasphemy, adultery, idolatry, and bloodshed. And this being the case, many have already begun to see the dangers of allowing these supposed religious authorities to determine what constitutes violation of blasphemy and idolatry, since these same authorities believe that the Gentiles, or heathen, must not use the name of Yahuwah, nor can they use an intermediary to approach the Father, such as our Messiah, Yeshua. To make matters worse, according to their writings, only one male witness is required to condemn heathen Gentiles to the death sentence, instead of the two or three that are required under the Torah. Why the different standard for Jews and so-called heathen Gentiles, you might ask? That takes us to the exact point of this video. You see, some are very, very confused, even believing that somehow, Torah observant believers in Messiah, those who honor Yah's biblical instructions for living, will adopt and promote these Talmudic Noahide laws. Those who make these statements, apparently, haven't researched enough to realize that under the Noahide laws, it is illegal and punishable by death for a non-Jew to keep Torah. That's right, the Noahide laws do not allow so-called Gentiles to practice Torah. Like, at all. They believe that Torah is forbidden for non-Orthodox Jews to participate in, and that also, violation should be punishable by death. That's right, if you're not an Orthodox Jew, and don't swear in and train in their version of Torah, which actually includes oral editions and Talmud, you know, the stuff that Yeshua warned us about and constantly rebuked them for. You are not allowed to keep Sabbath, keep the feasts, or do anything that only belongs to the quote-unquote Jews only. Quote, Gentiles, as they call anyone not within their Jewish faith, are only allowed to practice the Noahide laws and should be punished by death if they attempt to practice Torah on their own. Ironically, the mainstream Christian church is actually promoting this idea as well, in more ways than we can count. We'll demonstrate that in a moment, but first, let's take a look at how the Sanhedrin feel about non-Jews keeping Torah. According to Jewish teaching, 
War comes to the world through the delay of justice, the perversion of justice, and the teaching of Torah not in accordance with Jewish law. Simply put, if you want to practice Torah, you must become an Orthodox Jew and do it their way. And I quote, When both Jews and non-Jews can learn Torah without distortion of its halakhic Jewish legal meaning, true peace becomes possible. This includes recognition of the principle that Jews can be judged only according to Torah law, no matter where in the world, and that non-Jews in the land of Israel are considered according to the seven Noahide laws by the Jews there, with no sovereign jurisdiction of their own. In keeping with these Jewish ideas, the quote, Gentiles cannot keep the Sabbath or study Torah at all, or they are obligated to die. According to Malachim u Milkomot chapter 9, a Gentile who studies the Torah is obligated to die. They should only be involved in the study of their seven mitzvot, or the seven Noahide laws. Similarly, a Gentile who rests, even on a weekday, observing that day as a Sabbath, is obligated to die. Needless to say, he is obligated for that punishment if he creates a festival for himself. The general principle governing these matters is, they are not to be allowed to originate a new religion or create mitzvot for themselves based on their own decisions. They may either become righteous converts and accept all the mitzvot, or retain their status without adding or subtracting from them. Simply put, if you read the Torah, practice Sabbath, or attempt to keep any of the feasts without fully converting to Judaism, and keeping them according to their Talmudic and oral additions, you must be killed. And no, this is not some outdated, out-of-context writings that the modern Jewish people no longer worry about. A simple online search through forums quickly demonstrates that they still actually believe this, such as this forum on Judaism Stack Exchange. Here are some of the answers to the questions of, can a Gentile keep Sabbath? According to the answers of modern Jewish teachers. Rush Lakish also said, A heathen who keeps a day of rest deserves death, for it is written, And a day and a night they shall not rest. And a master has said, Their prohibition is their death sentence. Rabina said, Even if he rested on a Monday. Quote, The Sabbath was given as a sign and covenant to Israel. A Gentile is forbidden to observe the Sabbath or to make Sabbath of their own. A halakha codified in the Mishnah Torah. Quote, a non-Jew is not allowed to keep Shabbos. Those that are in the process of converting make sure to do at least one thing on Shabbos that would normally not be allowed. For example, they might carry something in their pocket. You see, according to them, the quote, Gentiles may only adhere to the seven Noahide laws for quote, righteousness. To be considered Jewish and therefore capable of performing their Torah, one must accept all the rabbinical teachings, the Talmud, the Mishnah, and the distorted Jewish understanding of Torah, followed by a baptism into their faith and culture. If you convert, there's no going back either. Interestingly, it was our Messiah Yahusha who said that the Pharisees were adding to the Torah, and thus nullifying the laws of Yah in order to keep their own traditions. In Matthew 15, verse 8-9, through 9, our Messiah said, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Also, in Mark chapter 7, verse 9-13, through 13, Yahushua said, Full well ye reject the commandment of Yah, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses his father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of Yah of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. As usual, our Messiah was right, and still is. 
These doctrines of men have nullified the commandments given by Moses. In this specific case of Shabbat, for example, the law says in Exodus 20, verse 8 through 10, Remember the day of Shabbat, to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat unto Yahuwah Elohaika. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor the stranger that is within your gates. In Numbers chapter 15 verses 15 through 16 says, One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you. An ordinance forever in your generations. As ye are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. And this is just one of perhaps hundreds even thousands of examples of how man-made doctrines have nullified the laws of Yah given by Moshe to all of Israel, not just the tribe of Judah. And we already know that the ten northern tribes of Israel have been scattered to the four corners of the earth in order to be a light to the Gentiles. A quick example comes from Nehemiah 1 verse 9 which says, But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, Though there were of you cast out unto the outermost parts of heaven, yet I will gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. But how can the ten tribes be gathered if they don't keep his commandments and declare the glory of Yah's name? If you haven't already seen it, check out our video called The Identity Crisis, Finding the Lost Sheep of Israel, and the Not Serene documentary for much, much more information. In the meantime, let me just quickly demonstrate just one of many ways that the mainstream Christian church is promoting these same anti-Torah ideas, even promoting the idea that only the Orthodox Jews should study and practice Torah. In this article on ChristianityToday.com titled, Jesus Didn't Eat a Seder Meal, Why Christians Shouldn't Either, Jewish Rabbi Yahiel Poko and author David Sonmel argue that, quote, Christians attempting to keep the Feast of Torah is troubling and demonstrates a lack of respect for the Jewish people. Quote, it is an event designed for and limited to the Jewish people, they write, warning against the dangers of cultural appropriation by the, quote, Gentile people. Should a Christian want to know something of a Passover setter, there is many a readily available Jewish host who would set a fine table for his or her Christian friends and neighbors. We have often welcomed non-Jewish visitors to our Shabbat dinner tables, our Passover meals, our weddings, our bar mitzvah ceremonies, and the like. In these settings, it is clear that the ritual is a wholly authentic Jewish experience. There is a world of difference between being a guest in someone else's home or house of worship and the expropriation of another's ritual for one's own religious purposes. They also write, Christians best honor their Jewish neighbors to whom they wish to express the love of Christ by recognizing that the Seder meal is a unique spiritual heritage of the Jewish people and respecting it as such. Put simply, Christianity today is promoting the same agenda behind the Noahide laws, that only the quote, Jews, have the authority to study, interpret, and practice Torah, and that anyone outside of the orthodox faith of total Judaism cannot and should not even attempt to live according to Yah's commandments, that is, not without Jewish supervision. Again, no mention of the ten tribes, no mention of Israel, no mention of the prophecies about our return, nothing. According to them, you must absorb all the leaven of Judaism to include the man-made doctrines our Messiah rebuked them for and become fully authorized through Jewish supervision, or you are disrespecting the Jewish people. Connecting these dots back to the laws we mentioned earlier, if Noahide laws are implemented worldwide, you'll be punished for practicing Torah, even with your very life. The Noahide laws and the authority of Jews to supervise Torah keeping are more likely to be promoted by dispensational Christianity than the Nazarene. And this article is proof. Prior to this era, 
The Jewish people were victims of Roman oppression in the first through fourth century, and it became illegal to keep Torah because of the birth of the Roman church and their hatred for anything labeled Jewish, including the Mosaic law. Now, the same who were once oppressed are now in power. And as a result of this power, it may become illegal to keep Torah once again, this time because their own Noahide law prohibits Torah for anyone who is not a sworn-in, fully converted, orthodox Jew who is willing to adopt all the tenets of Judaism. It seems that Torah is the enemy of Noahide laws, which is exactly why they are being passed. It is about to become illegal to keep Torah. And we live in the end times. Think about that. The Antichrist is the lawless one of the end times. Daniel 7.25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Remember what was foretold concerning this Antichrist figure in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8-12. through 12. And then shall that Torahless one be revealed, whom Adonai Yahusha shall consume with the ruach of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming as after the working of Satan, with all powers and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yah shall send them a strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they might all be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness here is Strong's word 93, adikia, which means iniquity, injustice, a deed violating the law and justice, or act of unrighteousness. Simply put, the lawless one, or Torahless one, as the Sefer appropriately translated it, will deceive many into a lawless delusion. Those who take place in it will be damned. If we take a step back and look again, it is the Christian church that is promoting this same anti-Torah agenda with YouTube channels, churches, and spoon-fed websites all over the internet. The Christian church, whether they realize it or not, are already spreading the same Torahless doctrines that coincide with the Noahide laws. Essentially, both, quote, Christians and, quote, Jews, whether they realize it or not, are already working together to remove the doctrines of Yah's perfect, holy, and good instructions for the end times generation. If you've already watched the Nazarene, you know that this is a position that the original followers of the way, the disciples and the first converts to the faith, were very familiar with. However, do you really think that these laws will control the world without the permission of Rome? Don't forget that at the highest levels, all enemy spiritual forces are in alliance. The legality of Torah is once again being threatened. The last time this happened, the truth was attacked, killed, tortured, and fed to the lions, and a new religion was created late in the first century. The new religion was called Christianity. The Torah removed, the Sabbath changed, and the true names of the Father and Son hidden. The rest is history. Now, after seeing that even just a little digging, even the most basic research into how the Noahide laws are the enemy of the true Torah and are perhaps even designed to bring about the lawlessness of the end times, it should be clear that those channels who might tell you that the Noahide laws are somehow a Hebrew roots deception are either lacking intellectual honesty, have a personal agenda, or at the very least formulate opinions far too quickly with too little research. So. That being the case, perhaps you should ask yourself this single question. Can I really trust the research on the rest of the topics these channels discuss? Something to consider. Until next time, I'm Justin with Christian Truthers. Shalom.